Welcome back, everybody, for my portfolio update for September 2024. And if you watch my last video, you know that we're going to do things a little bit different starting this month. We're going to go through all the same information, but now mostly in Snowball Analytics and not in my Schwab portfolio tools. And I explained why in detail in my last video, but if you missed that, I'll put the link down in the description so you can check it out. But we're going to try it this new way, and you guys let me know if you like it or not. Now, the market in September was up a little over 2% overall and ended the month up over 22% year to date in total return. And I really didn't have all that much activity in my account this month other than things you already knew about, like me buying Cloudflare. But let's take a look at where I actually ended up for September. Now this video is actually as of October 2nd and my account is currently at $310,470 and some change. And if we take a look at the actual breakdown, I've adjusted this to be as of September only and you can see that my account is up $10,818.81. And if we take a look at the breakdown in profits, we can see in portfolio performance that I was up $10,017.53. And so the difference between those two numbers is basically an $800 contribution transaction that I added in terms of new money, and then a $1.28 interest transaction that happened during the month. So up here is my full portfolio value, including contributions. And then down here, it shows my actual profit. So hopefully that makes sense. So again, in terms of overall profit, it was over $10,000. And if we take a look at the breakdown, we can see how it's broken up here. $9,736 was capital gains or what we used to call investment change. I had a realized P&L of negative $21.38 and realized P&L is what happens when you sell something and you basically get a gain or a loss. So in this case, it's actually a loss of $21, which ironically enough was when I sold SGov, which is the short-term treasury ETF where I was just parking cash. And for some weird reason, when I sold it, it was actually worth less than when I actually bought it. But I did get some dividends from it which we'll see in a minute. And speaking of those dividends, I had a total of $302.83 for the month, and we'll see the breakdown a little bit later. And then lastly, I had a little bit of fees paid on my sale transactions. But if we take a look at the month overall, we can see that September, like August, started with a pretty big dip, but then it rebounded really nicely through the end of the month. But let's go ahead and take a look at how we did against the S&P 500. So if we just click compare here, it'll add the S&P 500 into my performance chart. And as you can see for the month, the S&P 500 is up 1.78% accounting for the timing of my own buys and sells. So this is what we talked about in my last video, right? Even though we said at the beginning that the S&P 500 was up over 2% in total return in September, based on the timing of my buys and sells in the month, it actually was only up 1.78%, assuming that I had just bought the index instead of the stocks that I bought. So if we compare it to how my portfolio did, again, the S&P 500 was up 1.78%, and my portfolio this month was up 3 0.31%. So we outpaced the S&P 500 for the month by a little over 1.5%, 1.53 to be exact. And if we take a quick look at year-to-date performance, we can see that the S&P 500 was up 20.49%, again, accounting for the timing of my buys and sells, while my portfolio was up 18.47%. So we're trailing the S&P 500 by just over two percentage points of the index for the year. And now if we take a look at my performance since inception, and in this case now I can just click all, I don't have to choose a date, which is really nice because as you can see, it actually starts here at December 8th, which was what I used to pick on the Schwab tools. So as we can see, my portfolio was up 34.39% since inception, while the S&P 500 is up 43.65%. So since inception, I'm trailing the S&P 500 by just over nine percentage points in total return. So I definitely kind of like this view because I think it's a little bit easier to see. It's a little bit nicer interface. And at the end of the day, it's calculating it the way that I was expecting, which it wasn't in the Schwab tool. And what I like about this is I can try to get an idea of how the changes in my portfolio are doing in aggregate. Now, it's not a perfect science, right? Because a lot of things can determine your portfolio performance in any given month or any given time frame, and things can change very quickly as it relates to macro or companies or a whole bunch of factors. But it's still nice to be able to look at this on a monthly basis and just get an idea of how your portfolio is trending. Because for example, if we go back to 2023, you can see that out of the 12 months of the year, Year, I only outpaced the market in four of those months. And those months were basically March, April, and then September and October, where 
Two of those months, I was negative, but just not as negative as the market was, which makes sense because a lot of the stocks in my portfolio in 2023 were kind of more of the defensive type. And now if we go to 2024, what you see is that in the first five months of the year, I basically started out pretty much the same. Now, from January to May, I was making a lot of changes in my account, but I only outpaced the market once, and that was in April, where basically, again, I was negative, but just not as negative as the market was. But since that time, what you've seen is I've actually outpaced the market in three of the last four months, June, August, and now September. So obviously returns in the market can change at any time. And just because I've outperformed three of the last four months doesn't mean that trend is going to continue. But for someone who made some significant changes in the first part of the year, and now I'm seeing that I've outpaced the market three of the last four months, that definitely is encouraging, right? Because it's a trend that hopefully is going to continue based on the decisions I made. And that's one of the reasons why I really like this view, because it makes it easy to see the progress that you're making and how things are trending. Now, if we take a look at my investment income, specifically for the next 12 months, we see that my annual income is $1,743.69. And compared to the $1,981.28 that I had in August, which is a decrease of $237.59 from last month. But I did say last month that that number was a little bit inflated because I was holding cash in ESCOV, which is the short-term treasury ETF. That pays 5% a year, but it was just a temporary thing as I was waiting for an opportunity. And most of that cash went into Cloudflare, which is a company that doesn't pay a dividend. So of course, that number was going to go down. Now, in terms of my overall dividend yield, it's 0.56%. But let's actually take a look at what dividends hit my account this month. And this is one of the cool parts of this tool because it makes it really nice and easy to see. If I go back to 2024 and I go to September, we can see that I had $302.83 of dividends for the month. And if I simply click this, it brings me down to my dividend history. So we see that on September 3rd, I received $63.96 in three different accounts. On September 6th, I received $23.51 from SGov in two different accounts. On September 16th, I received $21 from Alphabet in two different accounts. On September 17th, I received $167 from McDonald's. And lastly, on September 26th, I received $27.36 from Meta in three different accounts. And yes, if you scroll down, you can see that October is going to be a massive dividend month with NVIDIA, the big dividend payer, paying me $4. So I'm excited for that. Okay, so let's take a look at what I actually bought and sold for the month. On September 3rd, I sold 53 shares of SGov at $100.33 a share. And then I also bought 69 shares of Cloudflare at $78.76 a share. And then lastly, on September 24th, I bought four shares of Lululemon at $264.55 a share. So not much activity this month after adding to my Cloudflare position, but I did decide to add to Lululemon as well because... I don't know. I like pain. I mean, I know everyone's down on Lululemon right now, but I thought their earnings really weren't that bad. I thought they had a decent plan and I want to see how that plays out over the next couple of quarters. And at the end of the day, I thought the value was pretty good based on where they were trading. So we'll just have to see how it turns out. With that in mind, let's take a look at my updated portfolio allocation and weightings. Now I used FinChat for this last time. And to be honest, I like their view a little bit better. I like the colors. I like how it's kind of laid out, but just to keep it all in one tool for this video. I'm going to use the Snowball Analytics view. In general, I think it's really good as well. Although I wish this color scheme was better. Like what, what is this? Just, I need more colors there. Just something that's different. But in general, I do like this view as well. And I think it's nice to just keep it all together. So first up is NVIDIA at over 15%, Amazon also over 15%, Apple holding strong as it continues to do well, over 11%, Visa just under 11%, and Meta now in the top five at over 10%, and McDonald's now a little under 10% drops to six. And those six companies make up over 70% of my portfolio. So clearly as they go, my portfolio is gonna go. American Express is next at 8.7%, Alphabet is there there at a little over five and a half percent. Cloudflare now just under five percent. Lulu now over 4% and MSCI just under 4%. And one nice thing about this view compared to FinChat is it does actually account for my cash, which is, you know, 0.08% and basically nothing, but it's nice to actually have that in there so that when I am holding cash, it'll actually be reflected. So I like that. 
So if we take a look at which holdings have performed the best overall, and remember, this is just price return since I take my dividends in cash to reinvest manually. And actually, I'm going to go into this view. It's a little bit better. We can see that American Express is at 77%, which is just awesome. NVIDIA still at number two at a little under 38%. Apple over 21%. And really, Apple's been such an interesting one because people really hated that buy last year. And I get it. It was at highs and they ended up dropping for a while. But Apple has performed pretty well considering where I bought in and where it started. Um, and I know everyone's saying, well, they have no growth. Their valuation's crazy. And sure, I don't necessarily disagree with those things. But at the end of the day, this has been a pretty good performer, and it's pretty funny just based on how much crap I got from everyone in the comments on that video. So just saying. Meta keeps performing well at just under 20%. Alphabet is a little over 15%. Amazon, a little over 14%. Visa, over 12%. McDonald's, which has had a really nice bounce back from being in the negative a few months back, is now close to 10%. MSCI is a little over 9%. And then my two negative holdings, Cloudflare, is slightly negative. It's still a new position, but it's a little over negative 2% or a little under negative 2%. How do I say that? I don't know. So it's almost negative 2%. You get what I'm saying. And then Lulu at negative 18%. And then if we change this to see who's performed best over the last month, Meta is in the top spot at over 10%. McDonald's has had a nice month at 4.5%. American Express just keeps going up, it seems, over 4%. Amazon, over 4%. Alphabet, over 1%. MSCI, over 1%. Lululemon, actually positive for the month at a little under 1%. And then for my four negative holdings for the month, you have Visa, which was pretty much flat, but down 0.1%. NVIDIA, down about half a percent on the month. Apple, down about 1% and then Cloudflare down about 2%. So even though I only have one of them left in my portfolio, let's take a look at my top four for 2024 stocks. And as we can see, only one of my top four for 2024 is still outperforming the index and that's Caterpillar. And Cat's continued its insane run, just crushing to the upside. And that's one that I'm super curious to follow because if you guys remember, I actually sold my Caterpillar holding last month after a really nice gain because revenue growth and free cash flow growth had turned negative. And I look at it as a cyclical stock and maybe that was the beginning of the cycle turning. But what's happened since is it's just kept on going up. So what I'm curious to see is as they report earnings kind of going forward, if that negative growth rate continues and it keeps going down, what does that mean for the stock price? Is it going to go the other way or will their growth reaccelerate and it just kind of keeps going up? To me, this is super interesting, right? Like people see this and like, oh, you sold the stock and it went up and those things happen. I've sold stocks that go up. I sold stocks that go down. At the end of the day, each one of these stocks is like a little experiment, right? You make a decision based on information that you have and your strategy and all those things. You have a thesis and then you see how it plays out over time. So this is one of those where the stock price is kind of in my opinion, disconnected from the fundamentals a little bit. So I'm curious to see how that progresses either one way or the other. Either the fundamentals catch up or the stock price comes down. But Right now, it just keeps going up. All right, so let's take a look ahead at next month and what holdings I think I'm going to add to going forward. Now, in terms of ones I'd like to be higher in terms of weight, overall, I like where things are at right now. The only one that I would maybe say is Meta, even though it's already in my top five. And I just have a lot of conviction on what Meta is doing right now. Like, I think they are crushing it on all levels. And I know I just mentioned like a couple weeks ago, I thought they were the biggest bargain in big tech. I loved what they announced at their event. And overall, they're just crushing it. And even though it's in my top five, Five already. I wouldn't mind having a larger allocation to it, but we'll just see what happens. In terms of ones I think are the best value right now, I would probably say Lululemon, Amazon, and Meta, although again, pretty much everything looks less attractive than it did a couple months ago. But in terms of what I expect to be doing over the next month, probably not much other than looking for some good prices on existing holdings. I will be digging into this analytics tool a little bit more just to see if there's anything new we can add to these portfolio review videos, so that would be pretty cool. And I will be doing a couple deep dive review videos specifically about Snowball Analytics and FinChat probably over the next month or so. Because obviously you guys have seen me use these things more and more in my videos. I've been using them more in my process. And a few of you have asked me for a more in-depth review and those will be coming. And I just wanted to mention both of these tools have pretty awesome free tiers. So if it looks interesting to you, I highly recommend you try it out and play around on their free versions. Like we do each month, let's review my portfolio goal and strategy.
My goal is to beat the S&P 500 in total return while creating a growing passive income stream for my family. Now, my strategy to achieve it is I want to attach myself to companies with wide moats that are generating increasing cash flow and rewarding shareholders with dividend growth that outpaces inflation or share buybacks that increase their ownership stake in the business. So if I recap what happened this month, my portfolio was up over 3.3% and outpaced the S&P 500 by a little over 1.5 percentage points. Annual dividends decreased, but it was expected as I got out of SGOV, and only one of my top four picks for 2024 is still outpacing the market while the others are trailing behind. But overall, this was a great month. I mean, we're up over 3%. We gained over $10,000 and we outpaced the market by one and a half percentage points. I mean, honestly, I need more months like this. But I will say right now, I don't see a lot that jumps out at me in my own portfolio to keep adding to unless I want to continue doubling down on Lululemon. So I'm going to see how things go this month in terms of prices and see if any of my companies start trading for a little better value. But overall, it was a really good month. So how did you like me going through my portfolio in the Snowball Analytics tool versus the Schwab portfolio tools? Let me know down in the comments below. Now, if you missed my whole reasoning as to why I did that and the issues I was facing, you can watch that video by clicking this right here. Hope you guys have a great day out there. Financial independence is true freedom. So keep building and stacking wins and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.